So the FDA has proposed new regulations on the quality of irrigation water applied to crops, uh, specifically onions and other farm-to-table crops in Mulhair County uh, in eastern Oregon. For the Food Safety Modernization Act to reduce E. coli concentrations to 126 CFUs per 100 milliliters of water, and that's colony forming units. And we were called to design a water disinfection treatment system to treat this water before it is distributed onto the field. That's for irrigation water, specifically for onion growers in eastern Oregon and Treasure Valley. And the way that my group decided to come up with treating that irrigation water is to use um, ultraviolet radiation or UV light as most people know it. Um, so the way that that works is the UV light strikes a bacteria, it disrupts the DNA inside and makes it to where it can't replicate or perform basic cell operations. So our group used chlorine dioxide as our water treatment di disinfection technology um, because we could use it for both drip and furrow irrigation systems. Um, for drip irrigation, it was really easily implemented. Um, there's just basically a port that you can connect into the drip irrigation system um, and you connect your chlorine dioxide system to it and it cleans the water and puts it back through the irrigation to the field. And then for furrow irrigation, we had to design an entire new system for it. So this is a little bit more expensive, but um, we did come up with a design for both irrigation systems that um, treated the amount of E. coli levels to acceptable levels using chlorine dioxide. Our group came up with a filtration pond that would not only filter the water and clean out all the E. coli, but also would capture tailwater runoff uh, from, from the farm in order to recycle water, nutrients, and uh, eroded topsoil, so thereby kind of improving the system's function of the whole farm. We went through several different iterations of our design, but we finally came up with using a chlorine dioxide disinfection system to disinfect the water. Uh, it utilizes a pump to pump it through a chlorine dioxide system through several different tanks and back into the irrigation ditch. Ours was customized primarily for furrow irrigation. Uh, we came up with a two-step design. Uh, first, using a sedimentation pond to reduce the turbidity or uh, like the cloudiness of water. Um, and, and then that will make uh, disinfection easier. And then we are using uh, chlorine disinfection to treat the water down to the required levels. Obstacles that we ran into were what can happen if uh, things aren't communicated well or communicated effectively. Effectively, there is definitely a breakdown in the in the structure, and uh, tasks can be left unfinished, and it ends up being somewhat embarrassing and unprofessional when presented to the client, to the public, to each team member. So we really learned that communication was key. And a lot of things, a lot of you know, good things can happen from good communication. But a lot of bad things can happen with poor communication as well. Um, I think one of our largest obstacles was um, not recognizing each of our strengths at the beginning. Everyone has different strengths coming into a project, and I think really trying to emphasize these and taking advantage of them, of them can be key. Well, we found that. The, uh, the idea of designing something and the actual design itself can be often very different and many questions arise during the design process. So we, we found that we constantly had to reevaluate what we were doing and actually change our design to meet changing needs and requirements that we found. I think uh, a lot of the times it was just communication between the group members. Um, it's something we had to work on and all much better at it. Be ready to spend a lot of time and uh, be ready to communicate well with uh, not only your team members but other people involved with the project. Um, I would tell them that it's really important to learn how to work in teams effectively and to figure out your strengths and weaknesses as a team to see which person can do each part most effectively and how you're going to work and function together. I think another really important aspect is good communication skills. Um, that's also part of being in a team 